Now at 5, mid-air mayday. Two Black Hawk helicopters crashing during a training exercise near Snowbird. The reaction from people on the mountain at the time. It only takes, you know, 15 ounces of pressure to pull the trigger. Plus, new details on a shooting at McDonald's. A father in custody, his son allegedly firing a gun at police. The question tonight, how do you prosecute a case like this? And more winter weather moving in. A winter storm bringing tricky travel and a chill to the air. The trouble spots to look out for tonight. Live, we're there for you. ABC4 News at 5 starts now. Good evening, I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us here this evening. We are following two major developing stories. We'll get to the Black Hawk helicopter crash in Little Conroe Canyon in just a moment. But first, we are tracking some big changes to the weather. Another blast of winter weather moving in from uh, central to southern Utah. Winter driving conditions expected to span much of the state. A heads up there. This is a live look outside of Millard County. You see the snow coming down in the area. Roads are wet and visibility, as you see down the stretch of that road, is low. And we're tracking the very latest with live team coverage tonight. ABC4 Cesar Conejo is standing by Incipio with more on the travel troubles down there. But first, Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy with the very latest on the storm. And Alana, what can we expect? Well, you see those winds whipping in Scipio with that blowing snow. The central and southern portion of the state have been dealing with winter weather for the last several hours. But now, northern Utah, now included in that winter weather advisory, you can see that extends all the way up towards Cache Valley. That goes into effect at 7 p.m. And that's new within the last hour. So as the storm comes in, it is bringing statewide effects. We've got a winter storm warning in effect for southern Utah, and that does include a portion of I-15 and a winter weather advisory now for several other Utah locations, including central and eastern Utah. Live look at Bryce Canyon, where the snow has continued to come down. They picked up three inches from our last storm. They are expected to see a tremendous amount more. We'll look at those totals here in a second. Here comes that low pressure system. It's got a counterclockwise flow, capitalizing on cold temperatures, which you notice today, and moisture potential. We see that activity down south and in northern Utah. Let's get pinpoint so you know exactly what we're talking about as we zoom in on the radar, you're going to be able to see that in northern Utah, we are dealing with conditions on the western side of the lake. There we go. Mixed precipitation with some temperatures there in Rush Valley and Tooele County. We're watching it over the mountains with Utah County as well and towards the lake as we head down south. The radar showing a lot of activity towards Cedar City with rain in St. George in and around Kanab as well as the mountains. But we know the radar beam can sometimes overshoot. We are seeing plenty of snow in the central portion of the state. And as we get through the next several hours, we're going to see travel impacted as a result. Where you see red periods of heavy road snow. The yellow, which includes up through the Wasatch Front through Thursday does bring the potential of light accumulating snow with icy conditions and cold temperatures. Let's check in on Scipio Summit. That's where Cesar Cornejo joins us live. This is an area where on the radar you don't see much, but goodness folks, take a look. It's coming down. Cesar, what can you tell us about travel? Well, Lana, here I'm at Scipio Summit, and like you mentioned, radar doesn't really pick it up well, but look all around me. You can see all of the snow really making its way down, and that's what we expect to see for the next few hours. Heavy snowfall really co coming down, reducing visibility, accumulating on the roads. Earlier, we didn't see much in the way of accumulation on the shoulder, but now we're starting to really feel the brunt of this second system. And as it continues to move in to parts of southern and central Utah, this is where we are starting to get some of the fun now. The second winter storm continues to bring in heavy snow to areas in southern Utah, creeping into the central part of the state. Roads will become slick and snowy as we progress into the evening with UDOT expecting significant travel impacts. Heavy snow will not only lead to fast accumulations, but reduced visibilities become an issue as well. And with snowfall rates beginning to reach up to an inch per hour, conditions will quickly deteriorate. This is an intense storm. It's going to be dropping snow at a uh, fast rate for, for several hours here, and that can make it very challenging not only to uh, drive in, but also to, uh, to see. Visibility is going to be reduced, so you really want to use extra caution. And as John Gleason did mention, visibility will be an issue, and we can see that right now. It continues to come down pretty heavily, and it is going to still go into the evening hours as we lose that day sunshine. <laughs> it's gonna become even worse. So please, just be careful if you do have to drive through the I-15 corridor tonight and even tomorrow morning. Live in Scipio Summit,
Meteorologist Cesar Cornejo, ABC4 News. Thank you, Cesar. Stick with ABC4 News and our Pinpoint Weather team as we continue to keep an eye on the conditions throughout the night. In developing news tonight, two National Guard Black Hawk helicopters crashing during a training exercise this morning. Yeah, it happened in Little Cottonwood Canyon near Snowboard Ski Resort a little before 10. Witnesses on the mountain capturing the entire crash on camera. This is a video showing the moments that the helicopters collided. Now tonight we're also tracking this story with team coverage. Our Jordan Burroughs live in Little Cottonwood Canyon with what skiers are saying about that crash. But first let's head over to ABC4's Kayla Baggerly, who's at Snowbird with the latest details. Kayla. Yes, those two helicopters crashed near the Mineral Basin ski area about 150 yards from Snowbird. The Utah National Guard says that the helicopters were damaged, but no one was hurt. The resort did close off those areas. The guard says this was a normal winter mountain training routine, but not with a normal outcome. The helicopters were coming in to land in an improved area when they encountered white out conditions. Parts of the main rotor from one of the helicopters came off, striking the other and causing the two to crash. One landed upright and the other upside down. Flying in the snow is not unusual. The guard trains in the sand and snow throughout the year. Eight people were in the crash today and they were seen by the medical team at Snowbird. I just saw some of the crew myself recently and it was a blessing that everyone was okay, uh, which for me is the good news side of the story. The Utah National Guard says the in incident is still under investigation. Reporting live from Snowbird, Kayla Baggerly, ABC4 News. Thank you, Kayla. Skiers and snowboarders on the mountain when it happened, now sharing what they saw when those two helicopters collided. ABC4's Jordan Burroughs live in Little Cottonwood Canyon tonight. And Jordan, you're speaking with some of them today. What are they telling you? Glenn, from the moment I got here, about an hour after that helicopter crash, there were multiple people speaking to me about what they saw and what they heard. I do know that the consensus is they say they have never seen anything like this. Two Blackhawk, two Utah National Guard Blackhawk helicopters down on a ski slope crashing into one another. They also just say they're glad that everybody made it out safely. This is not where two Utah National Guard Blackhawk helicopters collided, but it was in an area just like this. It's pretty scary. Several skiers like Henry Lyon were on the tram on their way up the mountain when they heard there may have been a plane crash. As we kept going up and progressing towards the tram station, um, we got a little bit more info and heard that actually helicopters had crashed um, and collided. The Utah National Guard confirms the Blackhawks collided and nobody was injured. Lyon says he has several questions. Did they crash up while they were like in the altitude way up there? Did they severely collide? Was it a minor collision? What it was? So there's a lot of mystery surrounding it. We told him the crash happened as the helicopters descended into whiteout conditions. He says he was able to see it from the top of the lift, but didn't hear anything because of how far away he was. I was like, I hope everyone's okay, you know, and how big were the injuries um, from that standpoint. So, um, you know, you always hope everyone's okay. Catherine Anderson was just hoping for a safe landing, and so was Jared Jones with the Utah National Guard. Every time you go fly a helicopter, there's a little bit of danger involved. Uh, I'm just happy that everyone was okay. The gentleman you heard in that story named Henry Lyon, he's actually spending his vacation here, and he says this was the last day of his vacation when he saw those two Blackhawks crash. Reporting live in Little Cottonwood Canyon, Jordan Burroughs, ABC4 News. All right, thank you, Jordan. Well, new details this evening about the four-year-old boy who allegedly shot at police in McDonald's in Midvale. New documents. His dad admitted this isn't the first time his son has gotten hold of his gun. Unified police say the boy's father, 27-year-old Sadat Johnson, was unhappy with his order and showed a gun at the drive-thru. Workers called police who tried to detain him. That's when police believe he told the kid to shoot. Now, one local legal expert saying that John Johnson is likely uh, will likely be the one held accountable. A four year old isn't fully developed, doesn't understand the consequences of, of firing a gun. Um, and so they wouldn't be processed through the juvenile court system the way someone who is even 16 or 17. All right, the Salt Lake County Sheriff calls it the strangest thing they've seen in 28 years as an officer. Police arrested the father on charges of child abuse and threatening to use a dangerous weapon. 
And new at five, a state trooper on patrol in Davis County in the right place at the right time. Look at this video from the Utah Highway Patrol showing the moment a trooper was almost rammed by a car. You can see a driver blow through a red light right as the trooper was pulling out. UHP says the trooper tracked down that driver who was then arrested for suspicion of DUI. We're told the driver blew double uh, the legal limit there. Happening right now in Utah's Capitol Hill, parents are speaking out against bullying in schools while lawmakers push a $36 million school voucher bill to now include scholarships specifically for victims of bullying. Now, if passed, the Hope Scholarship Bill would provide public money for students to attend private school. Today, Governor Spencer Cox signing three new bills into law. They include a change in driver license testing for humanitarian parolees and a notice requirement for teacher professional development days. The governor also signing a resolution into uh, signing a resolution to reduce carbon emissions while also preserving and expanding forests and other lands. This makes 23 pieces of legislation signed by the governor during this year's legislative session. Tonight at 10, a West Jordan police officer is out to change your perception of police. Officer Alondra Zavala says she realizes what it's like to be afraid of police. Shortly before she became an officer, she had a traumatic experience with officers in Mexico. She says it motivates her to be the type of officer you can trust. If I can do that and want to call for one person and they have a better life because of it, that makes me feel like I've accomplished what I put this badge on for. Coming up tonight at 10, more on what happened to her in Mexico, and it may surprise you that it led her to become an officer. That's tonight when we go behind the badge. Still ahead, remembering a Utah icon. A man best known as the candy bomber laid to rest today. Hear from friends and family giving their final farewell. Plus, President Joe Biden announcing sanctions against Russia, who they're targeting, and why he says there could be more to come. And you're taking a live look at Brian Head. They picked up 15 inches of snow from storm number one, storm number two, now in effect. Winter storm warning for the area. They could see another foot. We've got wet weather out there and expanded winter alerts. What you need to know for your Wednesday in Utah's most accurate forecast.